Yeah. There it is. It really is a big deal to understand that our mission is to grow healthy disciple-making churches and that our schools are there to assist in that through relationships, excellence, and service, right? And to recognize that when we catch the vision of what we can do to together, it does make a difference. I'm going to bring up two schools. The first one I want to bring up today and church is Desmond T. Doss and the Lynchburg Church. Steve Doss, Mike Hewitt, please come forward. They're going to share a, a story and, and how they're engaging the two together in changing what's happening in the Lynchburg community. This school went from a, a satisfaction rate of 49% up to 93%. Their enrollment has increased from, it was, it was diving down. It has now increased past where it was when it was a 10 grade school. It's now an 8 grade school. So we can look at change is bad and, and we're losing. But catching a vision on what you can do together changes what happens in this community. Please. You know, I, I guess we could both talk about. Uh, I guess we could both talk about uh, what's uh, happening here, and Billy should probably be up here as well. Um, but uh, you know, uh, when I first came to the campus, the school uh, was doing okay. It was doing, um, I would say, pretty good. But then shortly after I got there, we lost uh, two sources of subsidy and. Uh, we lost some, we owned some wireless spectrum, we lost a subsidy on, on that, and our daycare as well had no subsidy to give us that year. And so things got really, really tight. And our enrollment went down to 47? 47. 47. 47. Um, things were headed in the wrong direction. We were cutting our budget, we were doing everything we could to, to work this out. Steve can probably talk a lot more about that. But, uh, you know, uh, I really think the game-changing moment for us was we got a group of people together, we went over to the school and uh, kind of surrounded the school and we prayed. And we prayed specifically for 80 students. Uh, we said, Lord, we want 80 students. Well, today we got 76 students. Uh, and uh, we're getting real close. We've got, of course, our Connect kids and we've got another 13 there, so I guess we're past 80. Uh, but God is just blessed and blessed and blessed. And uh, Steve, I'm going to let you talk a little bit and then I'll Talk a little bit more. Okay. Uh, you know, for me, um, I was there when we were at 100. We reached 100 and rolled this tidal wave down to, to 47. And really, the community, the school board, was really concerned about was Desmond Doss going to, was it going to make it or not? And for me, I know, as you well know, that Jesus desires a relationship with our kids. So for me, it was something that Am I, I'm picking up a spear, as Elder Miller talked about this morning, and it was money. And it was uh, at the foundation of it all was money. You know, what drives, what drives you? And I heard it said, and I probably said it as well in school board meetings, the only way to create, to create more money is to get more kids for tuition. So the, the, it's sort of like what he was alluding to earlier. I'm looking at the kid as money and not as ministry. And so... For me, I remember very distinctly saying one night after meeting to one of the one of the daycare people and saying, you know, I don't want you, I don't want any money. I just want your kids. And it's from that point on, it seemed like everything seemed to change. I could I could you know I have I was driving in thinking of the thirty or forty stories I could tell you about Lynchburg, and this is the one I feel most impressed to tell. So we go to that. We're at forty seven. That that summer, I get a call from a lady. She is a she works and heads up the Liberty Bible Institute. If you guys aren't familiar with Lynchburg, Liberty University is two miles from our campus. So she brings her, her son in kindergarten and wants to join kindergarten for us. And her profession, her and her husband, are web designers. And so with reservations, she signs her son up. Well, by November, she also has four, she has four kids. By November, she's signing up her daughter. She signs up her son. And then in March, she brings in her eighth grade son and signs him up. And all of these kids are in our school, and they are coming to us. Just It's such a blessing. What can you do? What can we do to help you? And they went, the puzzle pieces just fell all into place. I shared a board meeting the other night. All of these, all this, I hate to say money, but money and things meeting our needs are just falling out of the sky. And they were a little piece of that, setting up our website, 
and they went on to do our daycare website and are now preparing our church website. And I have had more people come through that website, come to talk, than before that, I, I would say the number was zero that ever came to us. And now it's not only the money, the things meet our needs, but the kids are following this guy. And there are two kinds of kids that come to us. One, obviously, in Lynchburg, the Baptist is very strong there. So they have a very strong foundation, Baptist foundation, or they're completely unchurched. And, you know, through our school with Ms. Jeannie, Ms. Holly, plant the seeds, and then our evangelist, Mr. Billy, getting them. You know, we, we baptized three kids this this past um, November, uh, October. And these families coming in, we're actually doing a baptismal class now with three. So I think it's all of that one accord that work into that one thing is our kids seeing it as a ministry and not just as an item. You know, the, uh, I guess what I really want to talk to you about for just a couple minutes is um, what we're doing um, there on the campus. Um, of course, we're doing a week of prayer in the spring and in the fall. Uh, Billy Wright leads those uh, uh, week of prayers, and uh, they're very, very powerful. Um, I go to those week of prayers. I try to be there some at least. I'm not there at all of them, but I try to um, interact with the kids some. But what happens is is our, our school is probably three-fourths, Non-Adventist, I would guess. One to four. Yeah, one to four. So uh, that gives you a hint of, of where we're at. But um, what we have happen is um, after the week of prayer, we make an appeal. Our Billy makes an appeal. Who is interested in baptism? Then we break those off and have a baptismal class for those kids. Um, Billy leads the baptismal class, sometimes Steve, but I think mainly Billy. Um, we'll leave the baptismal class, and then right at the end of that, after he's taken them through the baptismal class, he calls me in. And when he calls me in, then, you know, I knew when I got there that we had some kids who had been baptized in our school that were no longer there, and that bothered me. Uh, in fact, some of those were working on our daycare, and they're not, but they don't attend church. And so <clears throat> what I said to Billy is, it's very important to me that somehow we get those parents attending church because otherwise we're going to baptize these kids and we're going to turn around and lose them. So immediately what we did was we call um, the parent and the child in together or parents and, and the child in and um, we celebrate the fact that this child has made a decision for baptism and we really celebrate that well. But then what we do is we... Ask the parent, you know, hey, we just let them know. We're very excited about the decision your child has made. However, we realize that if, you know, we just baptize your child, chances are they're not going to stay with the decision they're making. We need them to be at church, and we need them to be there every week. And more than just being at church, um, you know, it's one thing for mom or dad to drop that child off. Um, we need you to bring them. We need you to be there with them. And so what we do is ask the parents to make a commitment to be at ch church with their child, and they come. <laughs> they say yes. And uh, since then, we've started to baptize the parents. <laughs> um, and uh, it's just amazing what God is doing. It's just very, very exciting and amazing right now. Thank you, Mike and Steve, for sharing that. And it is, they, they do take this seriously. I remember we were doing a blitz in the area. And that morning, you had a parent call you to say, I'm sorry, we can't come to church today. How many, how many parents call and say, I'm sorry, I can't come to church today? Isn't that right? The child, someone was sick in the home, and they could not make the, the commute, and therefore they could not attend. Wanted you to know. Just, Pastor, I want you to know. Praise God for what's happening in, in Lynchburg and, and Desmond T. Daw School. Thank you so much. I want to bring forward now, yes. I'd like to ask Jose and Janet to come forward.